welcome back now we are going to discuss the um, diagnostics that usually done that we do after the regression analysis so for that we have already seen the command that usually do uh, is used to do the regression analysis now we go towards the diagnostics so first of all we need to know if there is an outlier outlier in the data so the story that we talked about of sales of cars there must be some some car which is which is uh, uh, outlier the the sale pattern of that car might be different from all others for example all of the people might have sold because they think that car is old now but uh, there is one person in the data who has sold his new car because he needed money so that person has different motives to sell the car so he might be the outlier in the data of sale prices so that data that outlier might influence the behave, overall behavior of the data so we need to see if there are outliers so in order to do the descriptive stats the library that we need to install is the library car library car so it's uh, so i i installed uh, loaded that car library if if if, if it is not uh, there uh, in your r you need to install it from tools and check uh, install packages so it is installed because i can see it is uh, showing that uh, package is loaded and i can confirm it from packages by writing uh, car here i can see it is already checked it means the data is uh, loaded so go back so now i i will go towards um, go towards the outlier test so the outlier test first command is that outlier test bracket fit so fit is actually we already did in the previous activity that we did the lm dot price lm price mp displacement the output is stored in the fit so fit includes all the background calculations that needed for regression analysis so r has that memory stored in fit name so we'll tell r that do the outlier test using that memory named fit so when i run it it will show me a new uh, uh, the, you can see the output below here you can see that the r test has been done and it is born feroni p value so the p value is less than 0.05 which confirms that there are outliers in the data some of the uh, observation in 74 observations some of the cars are different from all others so the behavior of sale sale or purchase pattern are different so we might uh, feel doubt that because of the difference in that pattern it might uh, disturb the overall behavior of sale sales and sale price differences of cars so it means we need to look at it again so next is qq plot uh, on the fit data so when i run it again it will show me a graph so th here we can see that the ideally the the blue line which is not dotted is the pattern of the data ideally it should be straight line and the the dotted blue lines are confidence intervals and we can see our dots the black ones like if i open it in a bigger picture so the black dots are some of them are outside the dotted blue lines so which are which are outside i can show it here like these dots and these dots and some of them are here so it means a uh, we can see it here that since some of the dots are inside uh, outside and some are inside it means data is not homogeneous there are some outliers and it is confirming some of them it is saying the 64th observation and 13th observation are the biggest outliers it has labeled the few big ones now we need to do it in detail which one of them are actually so so this way uh, now i will clear it and so now next step is we need to find the exact exact outliers so the leverage plot dot fit command will help you to find these graphs so we can see here for the case of mpg variable so i will pick it up so for the case of mpg variable uh, there are four observation that are outlier so 64th observation is outlier for mpg 13th is outlier 
71 is outlier, 7 is outlier. For the case of displacement, 7 is outlier, 13 is outlier, 64 is outlier, but 70, uh, 71 is not an outlier. So it means these, these actually there are four observations that uh, are outlier in the data and for MPG variable, so four of them are outliers and displacement, three of them are outliers. So what we should do is we should go back in the Excel file, remove these data files, these observations and run it again for safe side. But if we have small sample, what we should do is explore these four observations. Why they are different? Maybe because these cars have different, some other variable that is not in the model is explaining them. Maybe because these four cars are never repaired. All of them are repaired. So these are new cars, brand new, not repaired. So maybe that's why they are behaving differently. Or maybe these four cars have repaired more, more times than all others. So maybe they are most damaged. That's why they are behaving differently. So we need to go back into the data and see what is the, why it is so, so, so that we can explore if we need to remove the data or to use it with modified independent variables. This one we can say that uh, data is outliner. Second is influential observations. Influential observations and outlier are almost similar things. Influential observation means sometimes all the data is telling something else and there's one observation which is either too opposite or too positive. Means it is, it is influencing how others are behaving. So we need to find those variables. So how we can do is that first of all, the QQ plot is method can be used. So when we draw QQ plot, it is saying 64th and 13th observation has an influence on the data because they are too much, too big outlier. Then there is a one, another test for that. We need to install that library MAWS. I will move that command up in the library window. So running that MAWS, we can estimate that library. So after running it, I will go back to uh, that cut. This is a cutoff command to create the cutoff values and then plot that uh, graph. So when I plot it, it is telling us that there are three uh, observations which are influencing the results. 13th observation, 64th, and 71th. It means these that these four three observations are actually have a significant effect on the behavior of other variables. If we remove them, the nature will be totally different. So uh, another command that can help in uh, checking it is this. So which have higher influence, same three observations, 64, 13 and 71. They are very away from zero. The zero is the ideal data. So these three are furthest. And, he, and seventh is also for this, so he has labeled it. All others are, uh, this is one critical value, this dotted line, this is second critical value, this is first critical value, and second. So all of them are relatively nearer as compared to these four observations. So these four observations have a influence on how others are behaving. So we need to remove their influence. So we can remove these observation or look at it why they are influential. Next test is, non-normality, if the data is normal or not. So normal normality can be checked uh, from same QQ plot, come back to QQ plot again. Since the dots are outside, it means data is not normal. They are not behaving normally. The, the normal is the these, these full blue line. So if the dots are following the blue line, it means they are normal. They are, they are uh, normal means that we discussed earlier that they, they have a standard mean value they have a standard standard deviation and all the observation are staying within certain limits so that the mean and uh, median are same and there is no uh, uh, skewness and uh, scrutosis value equal to three, but the data does not have because they are outside the outlier. So data is not normal. Why it is so? We have given two reasons. There are, two, there are outliers and second, there are influential variables. Now, we need to go in detail. So we, first of all, we will do, we will calculate the standardized residuals, S, resid. So standardized residuals from the memory of regression, that is fit. We will calculate the residuals of regression. We already know what are the residuals we studied in a regression class. And 
now we'll calculate the histogram of residuals. So it's a graph that will plot the historical patterns of the residuals. So ideally, if the data is normal, then the histogram peak value should be in the center. But they are not in the center. The and histogram peak value should be near to zero, but they are not near to zero, they are near to minus one. So it means the data is not normal. So next test will also give a clear picture. Now we'll we'll do uh, again and these lines plot will help you to understand. And now I see this graph. So here this this the this line is actually a benchmark. And if you look at here, the bars are not following the benchmark. Like like this bar is outside the benchmark. These bars are outside the benchmark. It means the the data is not normal. They should follow the benchmark. So it means we confirm that data is not normal, and we already know the reason that uh, they they are there are outliers and influential variables. Next test is to calculate heteroscedasticity. So heteroscedasticity does what? It it checks if the variance is changing in the sample. So this is non-constant variance test (NCV test). So when we run it, it will show a table here. So non-constant variant test, and it has a it's a chi-scale test. It has some p-value, and p-value we know it is less than 0.05. So in NCV test, p-value is less than 0.05. So we conclude that variance is not constant so not constant means that uh, if you divide the sample into two or three or four parts you will be able to see that the variances are not same so uh, for the overlays we assume that variances should be same so there is another problem that is uh, concluded now if we see based upon the graph and graph is here so on the x axis this is residuals and on the y axis this is estimated dependent variable Ideally, estimated dependent variable and student as residual should not be related to each other. Means that on, in an ideal case, it should be a horizontal straight line, but it is not. It means increase in uh, estimated dependent variable is increasing the residual. It has a positive slope. So it means there is a positive relation between the sale price, estimated sale price and the error in the prediction of estimated sale price. So it means if we go towards the expensive cars, our model is not able to give efficient prediction of the sale price of expensive cars. So it means there is heteroscedasticity. Now we go towards the next test that is multicollinearity. So we already studied what is multicollinearity. It is a correlation between independent variables. Now it is checked using a VIF test. So now VIF dot VIF and fit so past regression results and we run VIF so Gujarati econometrics book says that if VIF value is above 10 then there is multicollinearity but here it is 1.99 so we can safely say that in our model there is no multicollinearity so and and second test is also same thing it is square root so it is less than 10 so there is no multicollinearity and in some other books they say that it should be less than two. So our data is also less than two. So we can say that there is no multicollinearity. So while we go towards the next test, that is non-linearity. So in a regression, we assume that our model is linear. But here we can say that we can see that we will check it is linear or not. So it is uh, CR plots. In the CR plot, we'll go and run. If we have seen this graph so if a plot so it is component plus residual plots so we can look at here is that the these dotted blue line is actually our estimated results so in our regression you remember in our regression we found out that increase in miles per gallon is actually decreasing the price so the dotted blue line is negative slope it is predicting and displacement is increasing the price it is positively slope but when we look at the uh, actual data and we plot uh, their averages 
this purple line is showing that they are not actually straight line so it means that uh, the that model is not actually linear we cannot linearly say that increase in miles per gallon is uh, uh, proportionally increasing decreasing the price and the increase in displacement is proportionally increasing the price so the model is not linear so if we go in another command cres plot if you look at it here it is showing same thing so the the lines are not following the straight line it means model is not linear in our, in in the next session we'll be discussing how to uh, make it linear or how to understand uh, how to make it non linear or how to correct it the simple solution that people usually use is to take natural log of variable sometimes it makes it model linear now auto correlation test it checks if there is a existence of auto correlation in the data auto correlation means that residuals are function of their residuals are explained by their past value so if we run this test we can see that the durban watson value come out to be 1.24 ideally what uh, durban watson value should be 2 so ideally dw test should be equal to 2 here it is not to so we can say that there is auto correlation and in cross sectional data that we are studying the presence of auto correlation means that there is missing important variables in the model so it is proposing us to add more variables or remove the inappropriate ones and add appropriate ones so we will be studying it later how to calculate it especially in the cross section data for the time series it has different meaning so next next test is uh, the next test is actually generalized test so gvlma is a library that we need to install i'll move it on the top so gvlma is uh, so when i run this library now i will estimate the gvlma and do the summary so it will give us few tests so skewness it is that the assumptions are not so so the model is skewed so kurtosis it is acceptable the model uh, the skewness is not that big enough link function not satisfied link function is that we assume that the independent variables are linearly affecting dependent variable so there is no transformation so it is assuming that it is not so the hetero test that it is doing it is saying that hetero is not there we can assume that there is no hetero so and there is a global global stationarity this is not assume uh, not fulfilling so these are the generalized tests that we can do in r on ols so we, summarizing it we can see that there are many diagnostic that are clear telling us that the simple story that we try to made make that the changes in miles per gallon and changing in displacement are sufficient indicators to explain the changes in price but in reality it is not so our story is not complete the diagnostics are telling us that there is some information that is needed so in the next session we will talk about how to make a better story that can predict the previous patterns of the uh, previous patterns of the sales sale price of the vintage cars